Welcome to this week in Missouri Politics from our studios at the University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg, Missouri. We are joined by the Minority Leader of the Missouri Senate, John Rizzo. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Glad to be back. So if you looked at any byline from Jeff Zig this week, there was a thousand talking about this trans student bill. Mm -hmm. One moved, I guess, through Senate committee, but one moved probably more high profile through the House. Um, talk to a guy in West Plains. Mm -hmm. How do, he hears this, he hears about a, a boy transitioning to be a woman, sure. but he wants to play on the girls' sport. Explain to him why he can't just play on the boys' team as who he is. Sure, I'll tell you this. I, I have two daughters, six and eight years mm -hmm. old, and honestly, I, I, I don't know how I would respond if they came home one day and said, uh, I feel like God made me in the likeness of a boy or, or I identify that way or whatever it might be. I don't know what I'd say, but I do know government doesn't know what to say either. And the bottom line is, I got into politics to help people uh, with better wages, infrastructure, making sure that they had the freedom to make their own decisions and, and the infrastructure there to help them follow through with it. I didn't get in politics to tell people how to parent. And I don't know a lot of people that did. And you can take this to whatever level and wherever you want to see fit, but that's what it comes down to. We just skip to what it comes down to in the Missouri legislature. Mm -hmm. The House will probably pass multiple bills on this topic. They, they, I think they passed a couple last year. And the Senate will come down to a bill. It looks like Senator Rader is going to carry the bill it, as it got muddled in committee. It deals with just trans athletes. Is there a way to find a path to have something that can be voted on without a PQ? Uh, you know, I think that everybody is trying to have conversations, not just on that issue, but look, I know one of those issues always goes sure. to the table every year, but there's a variety of issues we're trying to work through. This is just one of them, and this might be the most incendiary one that more people hear about than most, but we do try to work through everything. A lot of people that push uh, this infinite standing up and everything else have to understand the limitations with that. Are there things absolutely in the world that, that we have to draw a hard line on? Absolutely, but we're not in the position to be able to have that hard line on every single thing all the time. So let me just ask you again on this issue, which is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. It may affect very few children in the state, but it is uh, it's very sensitive to a lot of people. Do you think right now, do you see a path that you could come to a, a way that this doesn't have to have a PQ? I think hope springs eternal. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about something else. It seems like it's a bigger push this year is IP reform. Sure. Now, I've seen the Republic. We just had uh, in the next segment, we'll have Senator, uh, Pe or Representative Peggy McGowan, the elections chair, very respected lady, came up with something to raise the threshold to 60%, mm -hmm. but still, you basically write off North Missouri and Southeast Missouri in the process. Is there an IP reform deal out there? Democrats have been successful at this, at this in the last few years. Yeah, I think that, I think that they need to really be careful with pushing the IP reform on a variety of different levels. Uh, there's a lot of industry that also utilizes the IP reform. And if they can't get their issue on the ballot, they're gonna start changing the legislature. And when they start changing the legislature, it's not for people that are gonna be more conservative, right? It's gonna be people that, that are thing? gonna be, what's that? Is that a bad thing? I don't think it's a bad thing for me. I don't think it's a bad thing for Democrats. And so this is something that, that we're gonna look at every different way that they're trying to do it because there's plenty of bills out there but at the end of the day people's voices are going to be heard if you don't give them the outlet through the ip reform they're going to start doing it in different ways let me shoot you this though currently you go to the ballot let's be honest people hire mm -hmm. firms to do these things sure but right now they don't go to north missouri they don't go to southeast missouri they do go to the fifth the fifth congressional district and get signatures mm -hmm. What would be wrong with having you collect signatures all over the state? Wouldn't that be what I guess you'd call equitable? I think, I don't know what's wrong with uh, over 50% of the state agreeing on something. However you get it on there, you get it on there. But everyone gets to say at the end of the day, right? Everyone gets to go to the, gets to go to the ballot box and decide in that November or August or whenever it's on the election. And in democracy, majorities rule. Trust me, I'm in the minority. I know all about it. And, cool. and, and, and I just, however they get there is, 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 something maybe we could talk about but at the end of the day the whole the whole state is voting on it it almost feels like a goldilocks moment i mean um currently it's, it's relatively easy to get mm -hmm. on the ballot i don't think anybody wants to make it impossible but maybe just a little harder feels like what i hear your your reasonable republicans talking about is it should be a little harder to uh, to get on the ballot or to pass 
Is a little harder something that can be done? I always wonder why Republicans want to make voting just a little harder. Well, because they've been losing <laughs> at these things. <laughs> That's I think right. It's, I think Obviously. there's a reason. I mean, I mean look, th this is exactly right, Scott. I mean, you know the drill. I mean, we don't have medical marijuana. We don't have sure. recreational marijuana. We don't have a pushback on Medicaid. right to work. We don't have Medicaid Minimum expansion. Wage, go on Minimum I mean, we could do all these things, and unfortunately, for the Republican well, Party. They'd be better off than the legislature. If they take the, the money and the effort that was put behind them and elect more. Center, center left, yes. center right. Would the state be better off overall? Yes. I yes, because you're getting you're, you're getting more open-minded people uh, in the process, not just on one issue, but on a lot of different issues. You represent the place where the teacher pay discussion and the four-day school week has kind of came to a head. Yeah. The largest district I know of that has went to a four-day school week. They say they've done it to recruit teachers. Mm -hmm. um, the governor's idea, I think, is to pay teachers more. That's right. Uh, boy, it just seems like it'd be a hard discussion around the Fawn household if Gussie and Millie didn't have, to, didn't have anywhere to go on Friday. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I don't think the four day a week thing is, is a good thing for the state of Missouri. It's not good for our kids. Uh, I am been entertaining different ideas with different senators. I actually talked with Senator Eigel about it last week. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, we have plenty of good conversations about uh, uh, how four days a week isn't enough uh, for children and how parents are burdened by it. Um, I, I did see some, some uh, tweets or so on and so forth about how more teachers are applying for jobs in the independent school district at four days a week. I'm sure they are. If you yeah. went to three, they'd be more sure. that would apply. If you gave them a free car, there would be more, right? Uh, if you're going to keep the salary the same and tell people they don't have to work uh, a day a week, you're going to get more people that are interested. Is that in what's best interest of our children? Not in my opinion. Well, there is a part where the Republicans usually say, well, we'll just ignore the problem. The funding's not the issue. Well, I think the governor stepped up and said funding is part of the issue. The governor has been an outstanding leader in, in moving this needle forward. Is it as far as we'd like to go as Democrats? Probably not, but it is way better than any proposal we have seen in a very long time. And we, are, we have been uh, very supportive of his it, position in getting teachers more say, more you power. You talk to folks in independent schools. If this proposal the governor's has enacted, mm -hmm. Will they consider, I mean, you could either have someone work less or pay them more, right? Yeah. If he's going to pay them more, would this be enough to have them go to a five-day school week? And I would hope so. I really would. I would hope so. I, I, I think that we want to see what happens first, but uh, I would hope that if, and if it wasn't, Scott, we are at a $6 billion surplus. I would rather have the conversation where, where superintendents and school districts would come to the state and explain uh, how they're going to spend their money on teachers and so on and so forth, and we can maybe fund them for a year or two well, or whatever good. it is. Uh, Representative McMullen, who's coming on uh, in our next segment, he has a bill that said this should go to the district. Mm -hmm. You know that district better than anybody. You've campaigned all over it. Yeah. Would this pass? Uh, would four would, days a week yeah. pass? No. I, I, I didn't think so, too. No. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why it didn't go to a vote, right? Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about child. We're, we're kind of touched on child care, but uh, there's some things the state's looking at with child care. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite one? I, look, I will tell you, uh, the governor's another leader on this. I, I, I will say this is something Democrats have been pounding the drum on for a very long mm -hmm. time. This is this this weird space where uh, certain Republicans and Democrats in the Missouri Chamber have all come together and have decided that we have got to do something about this. The Missouri Chamber has said we lost $1.4 billion in economic uh, investment in this state last year because of lack of child care. So there's a lot of different proposals. I really like the way that he has done it with three different kind of prongs uh, mm -hmm. of doing it. Uh, I think we probably should look at all of them, maybe doing, doing, doing all of them. Speaking of that speech, I mean, you had a lot of folks. It looked, it sounded like the kind of state of the state mm -hmm. from a governor who's quite accomplished. He's got a, a, a pretty good list of things he can deliver and say he did, who's trying to run government well. Yeah. It looked like it was pretty well received. I, I look. I haven't gotten a lot of complaints from it. Won't from be popular on Facebook, I'm sure. But in real life, it looks like he's trying to run government well. Yeah. I look. I think the toughest thing he's going to have is trying to get it through this Republican legislature, specifically the Republican Senate. Uh, I think that they have different ideas on how government spending should go. But I will tell you, he has been a, a sort of beacon of hope amongst the Republican Party for all of us, and that's. I, I firmly believe that. I know I might not make a lot of people happy on my side by saying that. But at the end of the day, we have been in a desert looking for water for a long time, and this is the first drop of rain. Before we go, I, we have an announcement. Every year we do a Statesman of the Year event. Mm -hmm. um, last year it was Senator Roy Blunt. Mm -hmm. This year it's going to be March the 7th at Farm Bureau in Jeff City. And uh, we're very proud to say that our Statesman of the Year for this year will be Senator John Rizzo. Thank you very much. I am very honored by that. It means It really does mean a lot to me. And I, 
I, I hope to uh, spend my next two years living up to that. <laughs> well, we are, we're very honored to honor you and hope everybody will come and join us on the set. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah, it should be a good time. Roy's was a fun time last year, and I hope I can uh, I set the bar pretty high there, but <laughs> we'll, we'll do the best we can. <laughs> well, as, uh, as the spending plan goes to the Senate, I hope you'll come back here at the University of Central Missouri campus uh, and talk to us about it on this week in Missouri politics. we Will do. Thank you, Scott. We'll be right back with our Opinion Maker panel. His constituent, Aaron McMullen, makes his This Week in Missouri Politics debut after this. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople, while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right-to-work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs, and kills momentum. Right-to-work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. Data captured by our state-of-the-art monitors helps us pinpoint the timing and location of severe weather more accurately and respond to trouble more quickly. Ameren Missouri's investment in smart technologies like this is one way we're improving reliability and restoring power faster than ever. Responding to trouble before trouble hits. That's energy at work. Ameren, Missouri. Welcome to this week in Missouri Politics from our studios, the University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg. We have our opinion maker panel, Representative Roger Reedy from Central Missouri, right? Nice Benton County. Yeah, right. District 57. You're, yeah. you're really close today. So. <laughs> Ashley Bland, Mayor Kinsey, thank you back. Thank you for joining us again. My pleasure. Friend. Like friend of the show at this point status, I believe, right? <laughs> yeah, Cut your so. card before you leave. <laughs> uh, Aaron, well, first time on the show from Independence, Harry Truman Country. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. Are you all still keeping Victor Callahan online? Oh, uh, yeah. Day to day, <laughs> we have to check job. on him. Yep. <laughs> and the Queen of Carroll County, uh, Representative Peggy McGall, thank you for joining us. Uh, let's just start in. You literally came to the studio after you passed a bill that's going to be heard on the floor to the initiative petition process. We've talked about this many, many times on the show. It feels like it's never had more support. The bill that you put out of committee, what's it say? Well, again, thanks for having me. And yes, sizzle, hot off the press. <laughs> we passed it in the committee this afternoon, actually the forenoon, and boil it all out, you know, we need to be equitable in the state of how initiative petitions are presented and passed. So the only change today for HJR 43 is going to raise the threshold of passage to 60 percent rather than the current simple majority. Okay. Now is there a difference in a statutorial and to put them in the Constitution? Yes. So w we had a lot of discussion about that and, and we think that the two-thirds for one is probably the way it should be, but um, for the initiative petition, it should be 60. So the bird that's always been in my saddle is folks up in Carrollton, uh -huh. folks in Cape Girardeau, uh -huh. are totally left out of the signature process. It feels like to me, it should be a little hard to change the Constitution. I think it, it, it may be not impossible for sure. Right now, are they gonna be able to ignore all of Sam Graves' constituents and all of Jason Smith's constituents? Well, unfortunately, the way we've um, concessioned on this is possibly still. But what we added was the terminology, voters in each congressional district shall have the opportunity to review and comment upon all initiative petitions proposing amendments, blah, blah, blah. And the Secretary of State will be the one to uh, review, comment, bring it to those uh, areas up north and Represent south. Uh, uh, you're one person that speaks their mind. Uh, you're certainly not a Democrat to say this, I agree. <laughs> Tell me what would be wrong with something that affects the entire state, like the Constitution, making you get signatures in every congressional district. I have a feeling if they were leaving out the 5th district every single time, you might have a beef with it. Well, I, um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've actually been in quite a unique predicament because a lot, um, well, the uh, last two initiative, initiative petitions that have been presented, I was actually against, but I fiercely protect the process. Sure. Um, so, um, sure, signatures should be, I mean, that sounds fair, but my, uh, my thoughts actually drift toward the people 
And um, since there has been a lack of civics classes in our schools mm -hmm. for about 20, 30 years now, because I'm 30, so about 20, 30 years now, um, people don't know how to research it. So I think that it should be accessible to everyone, um, but I think that we need to teach our, we need to teach each other how to do it. And it, that, that would give us a better product. Now, Representative Reedy, I tend to think that they exclude North Missouri and Southeast Missouri because, you know, folks in St. Louis, KC, it might be a little easier to sign a government form and tell them their address. You go to an old boy in Centerville, Missouri, and say, you got something with a state seal on it, and you want to know where he lives, he ain't going to be real interested in listening to you. It seems like it shouldn't be impossible to change the Constitution, for sure. Seems like the whole state should be in on it, shouldn't they? Uh, I, I believe so. I think is, uh, you know, in our state, um, we have the rural and we have the urban areas, and we need each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to have a balance. We, we shouldn't be able to change something in the rural, say the rural says, hey, we're going to change this without the urban being on board with us or having some support there. And likewise, they shouldn't be able to change something without having some of the rural folks on board. So I think we need that balance. Aaron McMullen. Um, you're in the 5th Congressional right. District. Yes. Folks always come get signatures there, right? Yeah, well, absolutely. And also, it's a little easier because outside the high V, you have hundreds of people come through every day. Mm -hmm. You go to Dollar General in Cuban, Missouri, there might not be that many people to get signatures from, right? But um, IP, it feels like, just, just in my white trash intuition, it feels like somewhere it should be a little harder, but not impossible. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Actually, for the last IP, we had... Uh, for the uh, the last amendment, we had people camping out in front of Costco's and everything like that, and it really did have that feel that people are signature harvesting and trying to you sure. know go to more populated centers. So you know, ultimately, in the end our uh, constitution should be like a foundation of a house, rarely messed with and um, solid and you know um, just basic. And so um, I don't think that. Um, you know, one population center should have more say than the rest of the state. It needs to be a consensus. It looks like you've crafted some legislation through your committee. Because let's keep in mind, while well, right now most of the changes to the Constitution are done by liberal groups, Democrats, and Republicans change things to the legislature, which they have a supermajority in. However, you've been around long enough to know that's not always been the case. There used to be a supermajority of Democrats in my professional lifetime. Right. Would you feel comfortable with this process if that at some point the worm will turn? There will be a minority of Republicans in the legislature, which you and they will have to maybe go to the ballot to change things. Are you comfortable going to it under that process? Yes, I am, and I appreciate you asking me that. I think that, again, grassroots efforts should not be squelched, so we want to make sure that the people that do have an honest reason to change the Constitution are still able to do so, and the multi-gazillionaires from out of state maybe won't be driving this process. Another thing that I didn't bring up is this new language adds only citizens of the United States of America who are residents of the state and who are properly registered to vote shall be considered legal voters. Hmm. We, have, we have to put that in place now for what might be in the future. You would never know there was an IP bill moving through because this, uh, this week in the House there was a hearing about uh, transgender athletes. Yeah. And currently in the state, um, <coughs> I guess there's no law that governs it, uh, if you're, a, that's what you'd call a biological male, and you're transitioning, uh, there's a path for you to play in the girls' side of the sports. Mm -hmm. Now. I watch passionate people. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of moves you to see that many folks yeah. come to Jeff City at 2 in the morning and tell their story. Yeah. And if you're not at least heartened by them, I think you have a hard heart. However, I would say vast, Doug Beck said 80% of his constituents in South County would probably think that's a good law. Explain that to somebody in Stone County, why they should either not pass this bill or wait. The, 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 the trans... Uh, the, the bills that, uh, that ban uh, trans students from playing sports. I mean, just, just like, like we've said in the hearing several times, 50 years ago, they said I couldn't play sports either. And a lot of you, a lot of, a lot of that constituency isn't of English blood specifically. So a lot of times they were told that they couldn't participate in one way or another in recent history. So 
We know that that's not actually how it goes. And we know how important sports are for kids, man. Not only their physical shape, while we're talking about the world is so obese, but for their mental health. Um, learning how to be a part of a community, learning to be a good sport when you lose and not go shoot up them all because you have lost. That is all learned in sports at a very, very young age. Not to mention basic coordination. Uh, so um, it's, it's, and, and not to mention, there's only four children in the state who qualify for this. So we're making state policy based off of a few, and that's gonna end up being bad policy. Mr. McGall, I don't know anybody that's ever worked with you that doesn't consider you a fair person. I have, I have heard, I, I'd get around this state quite a bit. Matter of fact, one of my favorite days this summer is being Gussie come up to a Jethanol plant. Uh, I'd probably buy more beers and more counties than anybody in the state if you told it up. The fact is, I do hear people talk about this. Republican voters, I did watch many Republican candidates promise they would pass this. I've watched the Republican Party also gain votes off homophobia in the past. I think it's not unfair to, to question the motives of folks on this, but you could make a logical case, it feels like, that, this, that, that right now a trans student shouldn't play on the girls' sports side. Well, first of all, I'm not homophobic, and I know yep. you didn't call me that, mm -hmm. however, on my drive down here, here's, here's my story, and, and you know these people. I have three precious granddaughters. <laughs> Their mother was a all-American softball player on this very campus. Oh. So her daughters, my son's children, are very athletic, and they will hopefully get the chance to play and be as successful as she was in her career with being able to participate with people that are not stronger, bigger, and uh, of the transgender that we are talking about. I have great respect for uh, the representative and know that there are very few that this will affect and probably it won't affect Carroll County, Livingston County, or Lynn County that I now participate, or I, uh, what's the word, represent? represent? But I, I want to think back to my own family and my own granddaughters, and I want to keep them safe. I love your perspective on this, Aaron. You represent one of the few swing districts in the state. Yeah. You have close to as many Democrats as Republicans, and it's a changing area. Um, but I'd be surprised if you didn't have a few people talk to you about this. Uh, surprisingly, I haven't, um, especially during the uh, election. Most of the people were focusing on kitchen table issues like inflation and, and uh, you know, the price of gas. Um, I think it's been come, become kind of a hyper-partisan subject, um, unfortunately, because ultimately, in the end, what we want is the best for the child. I think everybody can agree on that part. But, um, you know, uh, ultimately, in the end, our avenues to do that are different. Um, I, I, you know, I think it's all about safety and um, fairness. And so we want to make sure that we craft the best legislation that does those two things. Representative Reedy, I, um, I do think you can make an honest argument about this, that it's not relying on a bunch of homophobia. I think it's, there is a logical case to be made, um, whether folks agree with it or not. There is a case, right? Oh, I think so. Um, you know, I, I think when we get into these really sensitive issues, we need to, to really be careful what we do and be thoughtful of the people that it affects. And you know, I one thing that stood out to me this week is, as those hearings occurred, uh, people were allowed to speak. You know, the hearings went long, mm -hmm. and they they put in the time, and people need that time to speak out and express themselves. Whether you agree with somebody or not, that was classy. How you, you, did that? you really need to listen and try to think of it. Uh, you know, this is an issue that. Uh, I I don't hear a lot about in my district. Uh, you know, uh, we, I don't think it's, you know, my people are more concerned about, you know, how they're going to uh, just do their daily functions. They kind of mm. want to be left alone. So it's really not a big issue in my district as far one way or the other. But I just think we need to be really sensitive to people because, uh, people, if you think about it and you look at their families, many families have been touched by these things. And when we go to making laws and changes and talking about it, we need to just be careful what we do. 
So I'll, I'll just finish by saying that I, you know, it, it's been said a couple of times that it's about safety. And um, I hear way more stories of male coaches assaulting female athletes than I hear about um, a, a child. Mind you, we're talking about blockers, so they're not bigger, they're not stronger, because I was the biggest person in my class until I hit eighth grade, and I'm only 5'7", so they're not bigger, they're not stronger, and this isn't making anybody safer. Erin, well, you have a bill. It's, a, it's talking about those kitchen table issues. The school, independent school board has decided in order to get, recruit teachers, mm -hmm. they go to four days a week. What's a lot of effect on that community? You've got a bill to address that. Absolutely. I have a bill that's filed 784 that what it says is that if the uh, majority of a school board votes to go to a four day, that's fine. But then after that, it'll go to a vote of the people that live in that district. If it gets approved, because if it gets approved, then it will uh, be enacted. But if it's voted down, then uh, they'll have to wait a year. Because ultimately, and this affects everyone in the community, it just doesn't affect people with school-aged children because you go get an auto appointment and the auto store is not open on Monday because, you know, they can't because they have to go watch their kids. So everybody has buy-in. You know, it takes, a, it takes a village to raise a child. And it, and, um, it directly t ties to our, edu um, our economy and everything else. And your bill says they have to go to vote of the district to go to four days, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so it's, it's not banning it. It's just saying that we need to have more buy-in from everyone else. That's legit the, local control. Yes, absolutely. We get local control. We're we'll, we'll get kicked off the air if we don't come to the end. Yeah. So with a minute left, who won the week? Um, I think the people of Missouri won the week. Uh, we had a really good hearing on the um, on the uh, transgender issues and everything. I felt like we uh, had a lot of uh, consensus on respect, and um, I think uh, we came out um, pretty well on that. Who won the week? I think that leadership on both sides won the week by having uh, sponsoring a capital mixer this week <laughs> because it allowed the freshman members to come to some of the upperclassmen's offices and vice versa yes. and um, just we need that togetherness. Well, you can say Judge McGall, but I mean, I guess you're right, probably. <laughs> Who won the week? Um, I think the, the, the young children who participated in that hearing for those trans kids won the week. It was very sad, but it brought attention to a very important topic. Won the week. I, um, I think uh, our speaker, Dean Parker, he has put people in leadership positions on these committees that have mm -hmm. been sensitive to the witnesses when they come in. We saw uh, Re Representative McGaw's committee went four hours the other day to hear everybody that wanted to be heard. We had the long nine-hour hearing that uh, Representative Riley uh, uh, or was moderated over. And so I, I think uh, our speaker did because he's putting people in places to do a good job and treat people respectfully. He's off to a heck of a start. I'm just being beat off to a heck of a start. Andrew Bailey, the Attorney General, launched his campaign this week and came out strong on some local uh, issues dealing with education, actually, in Columbia. I think the new Attorney General won the week. Hope you'll win the week next week by joining us here for this week in Missouri Politics. This Week in Missouri Politics is sponsored by the Missouri Automobile Dealers Association, Ameren, Spire, and Sterling Bank.